For the average player, classes are a pretty small and forgettable thing. Really only ever used to give a vague idea of what a champion might do or to make it easier to sort through the massive roster of characters, but classes are actually a lot more important than what they might seem. This is because the main purpose of classes is to create a power level for champion design based on the fundamentals of the game and what's known to be fun and fair. And I know that probably sounds confusing to almost everyone, so let me explain as it's pretty important. Power level is essentially the other half of balance. If balance is the line through each champion on a graph, then power level is how high or low that line is. Where balance is based on other champions, typically around numbers and tuning, power level is based on more static things like base movement speed and map spacing, aka the fundamentals. For example, imagine a scenario where you needed to attack the enemy a hundred times to kill them rather than just a handful of times. Obviously, that wouldn't be very fun because then everyone could just run to the safety of the turrets well before they ever died, and League would lose that sense of intensity, but that scenario could still very well be balanced because it's a power level issue and not a balance issue. This is also why the balance team is fundamentally different to the design team, and why we as a community need to stop flaming them for champions like Akali, saying things like the game is unbalanced, when for the most part they've done a pretty good job with what they're given. And this is also why giving a Mumu a second Q or Volibear a leap during the rework did make them balanced, but also made them a lot more frustrating to verse, because they were going from weak to balanced, but also out of the old power level and into the new one. So, the main purpose of classes being to create a power level for champion design based on the fundamentals of the game is essentially saying it creates a sort of rule set or guideline that can be used to say things like Volibear is a juggernaut, meaning you should have this, but not this. And the what's known to be fun and fair part is essentially just for the people that think they're designed for a ranged tank should be added, when in reality having all of your power and defense just means that while you would never die, you would also be completely useless because everyone could just ignore you and your lack of an offensive threat. The reason having something like classes is important is because it keeps the game feeling fair. For example, Echo and Evelyn, and how they're balanced as assassins, but also have an instant get out of jail free ult that gives them way too much survivability that an assassin shouldn't have. Same with Jace, and how he conveniently has the range of a ranged champion when he needs to, but then can also choose to be a melee and gain all of their counterbalance bonuses when he needs it. And another thing classes helps with is allowing other aspects of the game, like runes and items, to be expanded on much further. For example, Yumi has a ton of survivability as a support through the fact that she can be untargetable 100% of the time. This means that if Riot wanted to release a high risk, high reward item for enchanters that temporarily lower their defenses but increase their healing and shielding, then Yumi would abuse that item way harder than any other champion could. And what this does is create a scenario where if they did release it, they would need to directly nerf Yumi to account for the power the item gives her which ends up hurting Yumi players because it means that now if you don't go that item, you are straight up just a weaker champion because it's expected of you to build it. This scenario creates a dependency that neither Riot nor the players want. And this happens all over the game because there are so many champions that are fundamentally game breaking, to the point that in many cases Riot don't even really bother trying, instead just aiming for 50% win rates and only changing something if it's really bad. This is why I decided to put the time in and create my own class system that aims to help fix some of the issues while also explaining how they work in the process. First is how they are categorized, being split into two categories of ranged and melee. This is because while most games use the coveted game design holy trinity of tank damage and support, League is a bit more of a unique case due to the fact that items and runes make up over half of a champion's power and aren't restrictive meaning that unlike a game like Overwatch where you have little to no in-game customization, League is a lot more open-ended with how its characters are played. This means that rather than labeling Nasus a tank and essentially telling the player how to play him with things like armor and health scalings or restrictive build paths, the Nasus player can choose how they want to play and build their own playstyle. And this is the same with supports, where just because they have supportive effects in their kits doesn't mean they should be forced to spec into those supportive effects. It should be a choice from the player to spec into that aspect of their kit, like how Karma, Morgana, and Lux sort of work right now, except to more of an extent if the kits were balanced to be more open-ended. Like for example, Morgana's shield having a normal cooldown instead of being long enough to where a shield build isn't really possible. Then from there we have the attributes that are used to make up and balance each champion. 
The attributes are very similar to how Riot uses them currently, but with the notable inclusion of range, as well as limits on how they are used based on a bracket system. The way the bracket system works is by separating the attributes into two categories of offense, which includes damage, utility, and CC, and defense, which includes survivability, mobility, and range. Then, we give each champion something like 5 points to spend on each bracket, so for example a juggernaut would have most of their points in damage and survivability, meaning they only have like 1 point left for CC and 1 point left for range. And that's pretty much it. Each class has a sort of template that makes them balanced. And while some champions may slightly differ from other champions in their category, like Udyr having his extra point in mobility compared to Nastus who has his point in the range, it's still very close to the original and fine as long as it remains true to being fun and fair. And before I show each class an example or two and a quick little description that you can pause and read if you care to, I wanted to mention one last thing, which is that none of the classes are damage type specific. For example, Mage and Marksman and how they are implied that Mage is AP and Marksman is AD. AD mages and AP marksmen can, and in some cases do exist, the only problem is the current state of the game, notably in regards to items. For some class damage types like AP juggernaut, we would need to see some changes to either the item system or how the stats work for that to happen. But with that out of the way, let's look at the classes. For the melee classes, we have juggernaut, diver, skirmisher, assassin, bastion, and pocket. Then for the range classes, we have scrapper, controller, artillery, enchanter, and protector. And that's pretty much it. The system and topic as a whole is very much open to criticism and optimization as it's essentially the first draft rough copy that I created to explain the point. I would love to hear your guys' opinions and maybe some of you even have your own takes or ideas on classes in League. I would love to hear them all. I do read every comment even if it's probably a bit unhealthy. But anyway, let me know what you guys think. Even if my example of the classes don't hit the mark, the problems the lack of a proper class system creates is still a significant issue with the game and hopefully could be addressed in the future.